Hello. Welcome to Simple Hope Agent Deployment Tutorial. My name is Antoine Gray. I'm VP of Technical Operations here at NetX Information Systems. NetX Information Systems is a global distributor uh, for the Simple Hope toolset. Uh, NetX Information Systems also handles sales as well as support. Uh, we support our customers via email as well as telephone support. Please note our contact information on the screen as well as uh, you can find out more information about the Simple Help toolset by going to netxinc.com forward slash simple help. If you have implemented Simple Help already, and uh, you are looking for documentation or additional guides, uh, you may go to the URL that you see here on the screen. Um, today, in this particular tutorial, we'll basically be talking through the mass deployment guide. This is the guide that talks about the deployment of your remote access service or uh, remote access agent. So, the remote access agent uh, is basically what connects your client computer to your Simple Help console. This agent allows uh, your machines to be remote controlled on demand. These machines are then accessible via the access tab. You also have the ability to deploy these agents using uh, the uh, support portal or the manual uh, for manual download and installation process. Uh, you can also download uh, the agent uh, from that support portal and spe specify uh, specific command line options uh, to point to the server etc. But I'm going to show you a couple different ways to actually deploy the agent. Um, the, this latter method was is the most preferred but I'll, I'll show you uh, also the, the manual method as well because it does have its uses. Um, so the, the the latter method is the ability to push the agent from the Simple Help console using mass deploy, uh, and I'll combine two and three uh, because you have the ability, once you pre-configure that agent using the mass deploy feature, you also have the ability to actually download that pre-configured agent and deploy that agent using a third-party deployment solution uh, or Active Directory, or you can actually manually double-click on that agent to have it silently installed. So to manually uh, install the agent from the support portal, you're basically going to open your web browser and you're going to type in the external DNS name of your server forward slash welcome. The reason why we're using the external DNS name for your server is because that is then what gets fed into your agent uh, for configuration purposes. So um, when you do install your agent, it would have that external DNS name um, uh, embedded already so that when you, that machine leaves the environment, uh, you'll still be able to connect to that machine over the network. You may also uh, shortcut um, and go directly to the agent uh, by um, using the external DNS name for slash access. Uh, you can see from the screenshot there, um, with the welcome page, you'll simply click on the open remote access page, um, which would then lead you to a download remote access button. You can click that button, and what that does for you is it will, uh, since the machine, that you, the machine type that you're actually running um, the install from, it will download the appropriate uh, version and inst uh, allows you to install the, the version for the particular operating system in which you've accessed this page from. However, if you want to just gather the binaries for purposes of deploying using a, a different method, uh, you can click the All Downloads um, uh, link, which is located right under the Download Remote Access button, uh, and select then the All Offline the all offline uh, binaries then uh, will present you with the buttons to download uh, the appropriate flavors of the binaries uh, that you can then use to deploy uh, using some other method. Again, uh, there's a, a, an easier uh, process that I'll, I'll show you uh, in the coming slides. So once you have downloaded the agent and started the install, whether it's a um, you've you downloaded using the, 
the button uh, and is installed into the local machine uh, or you've you've collected the binaries and you, you're running the binaries on a separate machine um, the manual process uh, will present the agent interface that looks very similar to what you see here on the screen so a couple of things we want to do as we walk through um, this particular uh, interface is you'll notice at the top this computer's initial name is set to auto detect um, this will be the label of the machine as it will appear in the uh, Simple Help console. This does not have to match the host name. The host name will also be displayed. This is simply a label. Um, in most cases, with most customers, they prefer the host name to actually match the uh, label. So you just leave auto detect in that first box there and it will simply uh, plug in the host name of the system uh, when the agent uh, services started and uh, communicates to the server itself. In the next box where it shows simple help servers uh, you'll go ahead and click the add button you will be then presented with uh, uh, options for UDP, HTTP, and HTTPS. Um, it is recommended that you use UDP um, if there is an absolute requirement for SSL and you've installed your SSL certificates, obviously you can go ahead and select SSL. Um, the advantage to HTTP is it's always available. Now I'll pause here for just a quick second and uh, make the statement that in many cases, especially uh, environments where there are uh, high security um, profiles and things of that nature, there may be devices that will, um, you know, randomly terminate UDP connections. You may want to check with your security um, department to ensure that this is not the case. Uh, if you do select UDP and agent communication uh, is slow or it's uh, um, sporadic, then um, th that may be the issue. Uh, you can simply choose HTTP and, and be off to the races, uh, so to speak. Um, and the next button there, oh, excuse me, back up to the server host name. Notice here I have the external DNS host name for this uh, for this server. Um, the reason why, again, um, you know, we want to have a configuration that works across the board. So we plug in the appropriate host name that will allow us to manage this machine no matter where it resides in the environment uh, or if it leaves the environment, you can, you'll still have the ability to connect to that particular machine and manage it. Okay. Um, if there is a custom port in use, um, then you would obviously follow the external resolvable DNS name with a colon and the actual port number. Okay. Uh, optionally, in the in the bottom box here, you can go ahead and click the button to add this machine to a particular group. So if that group does not already exist within the Simple Help server, it will create that group uh, once you start the services for this agent uh, and place that machine within that group. If you have groups that already exist, uh, then you can click the Choose button. Uh, you may be required to authenticate to the server. If uh, obviously, if you're running this from a client machine, you will have to authenticate to the server. Um, so you'll be presented with a username, password, dialog box. You then select the appropriate group, uh, and that group then will appear uh, within the window down below. Lastly, you want to take note of this remote access service is not running. Okay. So during a manual installation, uh, you, you go through, you plug in all of your information, you must click the start button in order to start the service. So the start button will actually write um, the appropriate registry uh, uh, entries or, or what have you based on the operating system. The appropriate um, instances will be written to the machine to start uh, that service. Uh, once that service has been started, you should be able to, you know, in a matter of a, a few seconds, um, look over at the simple help technician console and that machine should be displayed. Now, you'll, I have a note here, it is recommended that the first agent is deployed in this manner to verify communications. Whenever we are working with, with customers to get agents installed uh, or get the Simple Help server up and running, the very first 
uh, machine that gets the agent deployed, uh, it happens in this particular manner. That because we want to ensure that the agent communication to the server is solid before we attempt to convolute the process by using other tools and methods to actually push the agent out. So if other methods don't work, we know for a fact that the communication between the server and that particular client does work and you know we need to look some other place uh, from a troubleshooting perspective. Um, generally when uh, agent communication fails is due to a firewall either on the um, the simple help server itself or on the client machine. Um, so you know we you definitely want to check those two items. Um, typically that's that's going to be the problem. Uh, I haven't seen any um, situations where you know the agent was just broken and we had to you know scrap the whole thing. It generally doesn't happen. So the next couple of slides, here's a pre-configured agent. The next couple of slides will actually detail how to pre-configure the remote access agent or remote access service as it's uh, uh, annotated in the documentation uh, from the Simple Help console. Um, the Simple Help console gives us the ability to create agent configurations that can be deployed silently from the Simple Help server using mass deploy. Uh, you also have the ability to uh, you know, download that pre-configured agent and uh, use a forward slash s uh, to deploy that agent to um, your machines using a third party um, a software delivery tool. Uh, it also gives you the ability to create a link or copy a link that you can then paste on your intranet or you can paste this uh, in a self-help catalog or something of that nature um, for uh, your end users uh, who have the rights to install to be able to install the agent onto their machine. So the um, this particular method gives us uh, more flexibility in the way we get uh, agents out as well as it's a lot less administrative overhead because you do this once for a particular group of machines and and, and it's, it's done. Um, only thing left to do is to go ahead and deploy that. So how do we get there? How do we get to the pre-configured agent? Well, from within the Simple Help console, you would navigate to the access tab and you'd click on the little button um, that looks like a computer screen with a plus sign. You notice the arrow uh, pointing to it on the first little screenshot there. Okay. Um, then you would go ahead, once uh, you've, you've done so, you'll be presented with a, a, a slightly different interface that looks very similar to the agent interface that, that you noticed on the previous slides. Um, you have the ability to click the new uh, app button. This will then allow you to create a new configuration. You can name that configuration by simply typing in the, the label uh, bar up above. You'll notice here I have marketing typed in there. This is going to be for the marketing department. You may have configurations that are specific for Windows, specific for servers, specific for you know particular operating systems or by departments um, you know to be able to place machines in the appropriate departments or you may have a one-size-fit-all type of configuration. Um, again, very, very flexible here. And note, um, from within the console, if you fail to put a machine within a particular group during agent deployment, you can very easily grab that machine and drag it from one group to another group within uh, the access tab. So it's no big deal if you miss that particular step. Um, and that's why uh, I've uh, noted that as optional as number five. But um, to not skip too far ahead, uh, from the, uh, you'll, you'll notice again the computer initial name. We're leaving that as auto detect. Um, with the Simple Help server, we're going to click the add button, and just as uh, explained before, we go ahead and choose the appropriate protocol and specify the external resolvable DNS name. Now, I mean, I'll pause there. There are some organizations who um, you don't have a desire to manage devices outside of the environment. Uh, and if that is the case, then there's no need for an external DNS name, obviously. You can just simply use the internal DNS name. Um, I just want to make sure that uh, we, we get that uh, that clear there. Okay. Um, and also, you'll notice I uh, have highlighted there uh, two checkboxes. Um, one is to install menu shortcuts. I recommend deselecting that 
option is only selected for the purposes of the slide here, but I, I suggest you do not select that, especially for the general population. Um, it's fine if you're going to deploy agents to servers and things of that nature, or maybe to um, you know ad administrators, um, you know, folks in IT, that would be fine. Um, but for your general population, you don't want to do that because they have the ability to then click the stop button. Um, then their agent is no longer communicating with the uh, Simple Help server at that point. Um, also, I want to make note um, the silent install checkbox. Uh, if that box is not selected, then the mass deploy um, button is not activated. So in order to use the mass deploy option, you must check the silent install box. And you know, we would rather have the agents uh, installed silently anyways, especially if we're pushing them in mass from the console. We don't need any additional help desk tickets, I'm, I'm sure you would agree. Um, you'll notice also at the bottom there's an option to download that binary as pre previously mentioned you can then use a third party tool to deploy as well as you can copy the link which would then give you the ability to post that link uh, for manual download that manual download would still be a silent install um, and it will go ahead and report to the console using the configurations we have uh, set up here. So it makes life very, very easy uh, for the Simple Help Administrator. Okay. So once we have uh, configured the initial screen, we then click the Mass Deploy button. Um, and a couple of notes here. Um, to deploy the remote access service, as mentioned, as it will be listed in documentation uh, or agent, um, you'll need an administrative or a root level or, or pseudo username and password. Um, you'd also need to ensure that the Simple Help server can communicate with the remote computer and there are no firewalls blocking the push. Uh, Simple Help pushes the agent to Windows machines using WMI, uh, to Mac and Linux machines, uh, we use SSH. You'll also note uh, in the, the bottom window there where the arrows are pointing, um, you can place IP addresses or host names uh, in that particular list. Uh, they must be on separate lines. Uh, you also have the ability to specify username and password for you know, one-offs if necessary. Um, you, you specify the host name or IP, comma, username, comma, password. That's it. Now, some have, uh, some may say, hey, you know, it is, um, you know, I have to enter all of these manually. Um, the answer is yes, but here's a couple of tricks that I've found to be very helpful for many customers. Um, if you have access to your DHCP um, server, you can go in there, um, you know, export the IP addresses, um, pop them in here. Uh, and that works very well. If you have a, an inventory solution tool out there, uh, you can go ahead and just simply run an inventory based on, uh, grab those IP addresses and paste them in here as well. So there are many ways of, of getting around, uh, you know, having to, to manually type individual IP addresses into the box there. Okay. Now, once you have entered the information, you simply click the install button and the next, very next screen will will show you your results. Either um, you're going to get a pass or you're going to get a fail. Um, you know, some uh, instances may install successfully, um, others may not because of firewalls, passwords, things of that nature. You'll have a result window that will show you, uh, uh, you know, which machines passed and failed. You can then retry or go out and fix those and then retry again. Again, our contact information is displayed on the screen. Should you have any questions, um, would like to have a, a live demo, uh, or um, you are having some difficulties with your Simple Help solution, uh, which is rare, but it is software, um, please contact us uh, using the information on the screen. And I wish you all a great day. Bye for now.